Yo, what is up, YouTube? Jane Speck here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2019 Back to Like Battles. It has been a while. We are back on Battle Spot once again using the Dialga team with Dialga, Kyogre, Farifarn, Incineroar, Salamence, and Tapu Koko. It's been a while. It's been since NIC, and then I took a vacation. Now we're finally back on Battle Spot and ready to play some games. Let's get straight into it. But if you haven't noticed, my voice might sound a little bit different, or the audio quality might sound a little bit different. I invested in a new microphone. Uh, thanks to the Patreon people for supporting me. Really do appreciate it as it allowed me to save up to buy this mic, which is nice. Oh, we got Geo. <laughs> 1601 rating from California. I'm pretty sure that this is Giovanni Costa. Uh, what is this? Okay. Who I believe, if I remember correctly, got top 16 at the World Championship in 2016. And let's see, Gengar, Gyarados, Necrozma, Kyogre, Tapu Fini, and Togemaru. So, interesting team. We do have a pretty big advantage, I think, with our Necrozma, with our Dialga. I think Dialga is actually really good in this matchup. Not sure if I want to bring Incineroar. There's like three water types. Mm, Fairphone's really good. I don't see what he has to be Fairphone. Fire move on Gyarados? Um, let's go Dialga. I like Coco. I think Coco's alright, but I don't think it's like absolutely necessary. I think I want to go Dialga Salamence. Maybe Dialga Farifarn, because like I don't see how he beats Double Steel. Mmm. Let's go Dialga Farifarn. Kyogre. He doesn't beat Kyogre either. Hmm. Salamence. Let's just try it out. I'm not exactly sure like what's the optimal lead because I didn't have too much time I think to think about it. But because I was trying to figure out like what this team can do. So I'm not exactly too sure. You want to assume Gengar is a Mega Evolution. Uh, Necrozma, probably the Z-Move user I want to say. Gyarados can also be a Mega Evolution, but it might also be like a different item as well. It's definitely possible. I guess it could be said the same thing for Gengar, but I just saw a video of him posting something about uh, Mega Gengar, so I'm pretty sure it's this team. We're going to see the uh, Kyogre and Gyarados lead. Okay. But I seriously don't know what to expect from the Gyarados. Um... We're in a pretty good position though. We can just draw off a power whip, I think, right off the bat. I do want to actually power whip the uh, Gyarados slot, I think, actually. Because of the fact that Dragon Dance Gyarados can do a lot of damage. And I'm not really too worried about Kyogre straight away. I think I can uh, play patiently against the Kyogre. So, it depends. Do I want to have Trick Room? I think I do want to have Trick Room. So, let's try it out. We'll, we'll get Trick Room up. And I think I just want to go straight for the power up in the Gyarados. I hope it's not like a fire move coming out here, but we'll see. Kyra going to switch out Necrozma. Um, Totemaru. Okay, so that was something like I um, was thinking. I thought maybe Necrozma would come out, but I think that works out perfectly for me. We're going to see the Gyarados Mega Evolve. I mean, Dragon Ass, which is fine here, I think. Because now I'll be able to get a power up and trick him off, which is really good here. As we do get the damage off on the Gyarados, which is really lovely there. Nice amount of damage and trick him will go up. So, not a bad couple of turns here. We are going to be able to... I wonder if Boldos would knock out this uh, Totemar right off the bat. I really just don't want to take a crunch uh, right away. I think the best place is just to Dragon Pulse the Gyarados. Go hard Salamence. Because I'd rather have Salamence take the damage. Because it's not really necessary for Salamence to be like healthy in this game at all. The main point is to really just damage that Gyarados and prevent it from getting like a huge crunch in the fair front, which is probably the most my opponent can do uh, damage wise. So we're going to see the Gyarados Mega Evolve, which is completely acceptable. Probably going to go for the crunch now. I wonder how much Dragon Pulse does. I'm not sure if it's going to be a 2 KO. It would be great if it is, but I wouldn't expect it to be. So let's see here. Fake out going to come out probably in the Dialga slot. No, it's going to be into the Fairfront slot. So uh, afraid of me going for the power, which definitely does make sense there. We will get Dragon Pulse off into the Gyarados. Ooh, it is nice. Okay, perfect. And a Crunch going to go off into the Salamence, which gets a critical hit. A bit unfortunate. I don't need help on Mence, though. Although this means I can only get one double edge off, which is a little bit disappointing. But definitely not the end of the world. Dragon Pulse is a very safe play in the Gyarados, I think, here. 
And uh, back in a fair friend we go. Yep. Don't really see a drawback to this play. We will retreat here, go into fair front. I wanted the Gyarados is going to protect, switch out, but I think just covering all bases is fine. We're going to see the Gyarados switch out. It's going to be the Necrozma coming out. Okay. So that's completely fine as well. As we will get a Dragon Pulse off into Necrozma. I would assume this has to be the Z-move on the team, so I don't think it's going to be policy. Could be policy, but definitely I don't think it is. Nuzzle going to come out on the fair front, actually. Okay. So Para is going to be really annoying on fair front, but I think we can deal with it. A Bulldoze is looking really good here, since we do have Bulldoze. So, although the speed would drop, I'm not sure if that's going to help us or hurt us. But I think it's worth it here. We're going to protect here and go for the Bulldoze. We'll see how this goes. Like, Necrozma can't do much to Fairphorn regardless, and my opponent might not expect a Bulldoze, so... Hoping we can get the Bulldoze off. We'll protect here. Bulldoze does come out, and we do break through Paralysis, so we should get rid of Totemaru. I don't think Totemaru's living this, and the damage on Necrozma is just lovely, so... Especially since Power Up is threatening the Kyogre in the back, as well as the, um... Gyarados. As we see Sunsteel Strike into the Dialga, which I think either means you don't have Earth Power, or you were anticipating the switch into Salamence, which is a respectable play. A Kyogre is going to come back out once again, and now we have to break through the Paralysis and hit our Power Whip. If we do that, I think we just win the game, because the damage on Kyogre should just seal it up for my own Kyogre, just to sweep through my opponent's team. As well as my Dialga, which is like fully healthy in the back. I'm going to go Mens here, and um, go for the Power Whip, I think. I don't know if Trick Room is going to end. Uh, no, it's better to power it because if you decide to double protect here, that means I can threaten with my, uh, I can threaten with my Salamence the following turn, like a very powerful double edge. So, I think this works out for me. We'll get Intimidate off as well in the Necrozma, which could be beneficial. Who knows? We'll see here. As Kyra going to protect, which is fine. Let's see what the Necrozma goes for. It's going to be, it's going to attack here. We do get a... Power up into the Protect. So still Strike going to come out once again. Is that going to target down the Dialga slot again? Probably. I would assume you would Photon, guys, if you target down the Pharaoh. Yeah, nice play. But I still think I'm in the driver's seat right here. There's not really much my opponent can really do. Um, the question is, do I want to go Dialga or do I want to go Kyogre? Um, I think Kyogre is pretty good here. I could force the Necrozma to potentially burst and get an Ice Beam off. Hmm. Or I could just Origin Pulse for damage. Either way, I'm threatening like a lot of damage onto my opponent's side of the field, and my opponent doesn't really have much for it. So... I think the play is just to Origin Pulse Power Up, because Power Up doesn't KO. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just Origin Pulse Power Up. I could Ice Beam the Necrozma. I don't think that's really worth the play here. I catch the Gyarados. Gyarados decides to switch out into the Kyogre. We are going to see the Ultra Burst, though. So I could have Ice Beam there, potentially. Uh, not the biggest deal in the world, though. I'm not really too afraid of this. Uh, it, it is gets a bit scary, though, if I miss Origin Pulse and Power Whip. Both Sun guys are going to come out. Okay, so it was faster anyway. So it wasn't like a big deal that I missed here. Uh, I did an Ice Beam. Uh, let's see. We do get the Origin Pulse. The Cosmo Voids. Uh, we do hit the Kyogre, though, which is the bigger target, I think, to weaken the power of Water Spot, even just by a little, for our Assault Vest. We are going to see Thunder, so... Um, Thunder... I'm going to assume it's Ice Beam, but I'm not exactly too sure. Kyogre goes down, which is fine. Like, I don't mind losing Kyogre here, if we can get the uh, power up off. A little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Red Power and Ice Beam shouldn't knock my Dialga out, and I should be able to get Trick Room up and Power Whip. And I think that should seal up the game. Like, even though I lost my Kyogre, probably got the worst turn possible. It's not really the worst turn possible, because I think now I can just Trick Room up here and just Power Whip. And there's not really much my opponent can do to stop that. Because of the fact that all my opponent's Pokemon are in range for a Power Whip or Dragon Pulse to knock it out, I think I'm in a good spot regardless. Like, I forced a Burst to come out. We're going to see the Z-Move actually come out right now, so... That's an interesting play. Are you going to try to power through the Farifor and hope that I just, like... Uh, you're probably just going to go for, like, Paras and uh, Misses at this point. Because, like, I think that's your only game plan against the Farifor. So I'll see you right after the Z-Move animation ends. That did do a lot. 
Uh, water spot gonna come out. Okay. Better find tank stats. So this Diaga, and that should be fine. All right. Connect, so that should be the game because now um, Kyra goes down and there really isn't much for my opponent at this point of the game. Yeah. We should be able to get a Dragon Pulse off in the Gyarados slot, a Gyarball, and then a Krasma. I could do it the other way around. Frankly, I just don't think Ice Beam. I don't think our power would knock out my Dialga this range, which is why I'm thinking just Dragon Pulse in the Gyarados is probably safer. But yeah, there really isn't much for my opponent that can. Uh, be done here because now I think yeah, I should live the earth power to surrender So we'll go for dragon pulse. We'll go for a gyro ball into the necrozma Actually, gyro ball probably doesn't knock out necrozma, but the match is gonna be forfeited I think uh, geo realizes there really isn't much that can be done in this situation Like I think the match was really tough for him He didn't have much for Diaga or Fairfront and again Diaga and Fairfront Diaga is just like really good at this point right now. I think uh, it's been strong uh, we didn't get to see, unfortunately, many Diagas. I think there are only like two Diagas in the top 64 of North America Internets. But I still think it's a really strong core. And if it can, if there is like a better Diaga build, it might be a really good play for Worlds. But, oh boy, I hope the video's not lagging too, too much. Uh, looks like it is kind of lagging. Uh, okay, it looks like it's fixed now. But yeah, there wasn't really much Diaga done. If you do want to check him out, by the way, he makes some pretty cool content. I'll link his Twitter and his YouTube series, a uh, YouTube channel down below. I don't think he posts any YouTube videos as as of recently, but he definitely makes some high quality content. So go check him out. But yeah, I think overall, uh, I could have played probably a bit better with my Kyogre and my Fairphone. I think I could have just sealed up the game if I went for the Ice Beam instead into the Necrozma slot. But I want to Origin Pulse because if he stayed in regular form to, you know, try to take on my Dialga better, like, basically the Origin Pulse would have just put him in range of Dragon Pulse anyway, so it didn't make a big deal. If he went for the Burst right there, like, I would be able to knock him out with Dragon Pulse, and that's basically what I tried to do there. So, um, maybe it was better just to go for a Dragon Pulse into a, uh, into the Necrozma slot and it, maybe, like, to Jar Ball into the Gyarados slot, but the thing I was worried about is, like, if the Gyarados... For some reason, doesn't care, like, carries Earthquake instead. But hold on. Alright, time for the next battle of today's episode. I actually had a phone call in the middle of the uh, last battle that I played in. But thankfully, my opponent decided to DC in, like, turn 3. Because there was, like, no matchup. Because my opponent had, like, again, no answer to Dialga. It was, like, a Zern Ogre team that didn't have an answer to Dialga or Farifarn. So, yeah, there wasn't really much about that battle. I got a Drampa, I guess, but again, my opponent decided to DC turn 3 after realizing that uh, my opponent had no out at that point of the game. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be looking for our next battle, and I think Dialga is just, I don't know, it's a really strange Pokemon where it can do one thing or the other. It's not like the bulkiest Pokemon, it still takes a lot from like Kyogre Water Spout, but it's a really strong Pokemon in the fact that it has like those good matchups again against a lot of Kyogre teams. And I think that's one of the cool niches, especially if you pair it up with Fairphone, it's really hard for the opponent to justify bringing the Kyogre. Especially against this team, it's kind of hard to bring Kyogre uh, because of the fact that I have my own Kyogre. I have a Dialga, I have Fairphone, which are tanking your attacks, as well as Tapu Koko that's threatening you, and Salamence even that's threatening you on the offensive side. So. Yeah, it's hard to bring Kyogre, and of course, some teams need to bring Kyogre as their offense against Incineroar. So, yeah, it's a really... I think Dialga is a really cool Pokemon. And I think, again, it's been underused so far, and definitely underrated. But, yeah, of course, it does have a lot of matches it does struggle against. I think uh, Yveltal, Lunala all give it some trouble. Xerneas, of course, can still give it trouble, but... I don't know, I think Dialga is a really strong Pokemon as it is right now, and uh, we'll see if we can find another game where Dialga can put in some work. We'll be right back with the next game of today's episode. Alright, we got our next opponent, 1507 rated player from Japan with another Ray Ogre team. It's actually the team that Wolf used to win NAIC, so this is actually really good for us because our Dialga has a very fun time. Of course, we have to worry about two things in the Twinkle Tackle on the Tapu Koko. As well as the Earth Power on the Rayquaza. And we do actually have to be careful to South Steel. Because South Steel could be a very scary Pokemon to deal with as well. So. What am I exactly seeing myself bring? Uh, Fairfarden is actually pretty key here. Fairfarden does really well against my opponent's Pokemon. 
Um, especially since the Incineroar actually doesn't have Flare Blitz, so... Unless my opponent did change it, I am gonna assume that there could be a potential Flare Blitz on the Incineroar. So, really, it just depends on what I want to bring. I definitely want to bring Dialga. I don't think I'm bringing my Salamence here. I do want to bring my Tapu Koko because Thunder and the Z Twinkle Tackle is going to be so good against my opponent's team. But at the same time, it's not exactly super necessary. Um, Incineroar could be really good here. Although, I don't think you would bring Celesteela. It's definitely a possibility since you don't have much to bring with Dialga. Um... Hmm. I think I'm gonna go Dialga, Baraforn, Kyogre. You know what? I'll try and send her out. I I want to see what, like what the best combination against this kind of team is because we'll probably be seeing it on later as well because this is pretty early. We're only like I think on episode three of this team we got four more episodes left we're probably going to face this one or two more times at the very least so might as well just get some knowledge and figure out like what's the best combination against this team we're going to see the incinerator quasa so i basically led very poorly here <laughs> like i led very poorly although i don't think this is too big of a deal i could just switch out the Ferrothorn and incinerator and protect here i don't even have to but there could be something like i basically want to get a safe position here Against my opponent's side of the field. And I think uh, getting Kyogre in the Trick Room is very nice here. Especially since Wolf was a very fast Kyogre at NAIC. I think he was max speed. Because he was ma uh, speed tying James Evans' uh, Groudon. But I think Trick Room here is a bit... No, not Trick Room. Protect is the safe play. As well as going into Incineroar here. For that Intimidate. Coco might have been a really strong lead though. Um, but yeah. We got to weaken that Rayquaza immensely here um of course we also have to worry about the incineroar carrying the so there are a few places that my opponent could make the next turn which is the super scary part uh if coco's in the back we could see a coco switch in if cell steel's in the back it could also switch in i guess for the Raquaza. there's also the fact we also have to worry about roar on incineroar so we can't exactly guarantee trick room just yet but if i can get trick room out that'd be really nice against my opponent so We'll see what happens here. We will get a Intimidate off into both these Pokemon. My opponent might not even have Flare Blitz. It might just decide to go, hey, I don't have much for this Fair Phone. I'm going to double up with Fake at, with Dragon Scent and throw with, not throw Chop, Darkest Lariat actually. Uh, just because, like, my opponent might be running the exact same sets. Who knows? Maybe has a few edits. Uh, we will just protect Dialga because I think this is the safest move. We don't risk Flare Blitz. We don't risk anything really. Uh, we're going to see the Earth Power and the Dialga. And a uh, U-turn, okay. So, gonna capitalize on momentum, which is completely fine here, because even if Kyogre comes in, I think just a Dragon Pulse and Array is very safe here. Gain the damage on Ray is so important. Um. So, yeah, I don't think I really mind that too much. We are gonna see the Kyogre come out, and I guess maybe I could Trick Room as well. I'm not exactly too sure what I want to do, because I just don't know how much damage we do with our... how much our power does. If it's under half... It's actually a really good position just to go for a um, Trick Room here. Hmm. Maybe Trick Room is the play. Like, there's not really much threatening me in Trick Room. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to attempt a Trick Room. I'm going to scout. I'm going to Trick Room here and fake out the Kyogre. I think this is the best opportunity to get Trick Room up if possible. And then I could rotate around. So, we'll see what my opponent decides to do here. Maybe an Earth Power back in the Diaga, which would be completely fine. Uh, I could double switch the following turn if I really want to. I do have to get damage on the Rado, which is really important. But the nice part is that the uh, Delta Stream is not on the field. So, an Ice Beam might be able to do... An Ice Beam is probably going to do about 80% to the Ray. So, if I could get in that range, it would be really nice here. But we do have to keep Incineroar around in case the Celesteel is in the back. We will fake out here the Kyogre. No switch from my opponent's side of the field. Earth Power is going to come out into my Dialga slot once again. But that drop would be the worst case scenario. But yeah, Dialga actually takes that, which is really nice. Um, and we will be able to get Trick Room up. Nice. So that's a really good turn for us. As now we can probably just U-turn out the Kyogre. Yeah, I want to uh, Dragon Pulse to Ray 
And I want to U-turn out the... Do I U-turn out the Kyogre or do I just U-turn out the Ray? Because Incineroar could come out for the Ray, theoretically. I think it's just better to U-turn the Kyogre. Because it guarantees put, puts in range of power whip range. Uh, if it's like a defensive Kyogre, my opponent changed the set. So, let's see. Ray is going to switch out. We are going to see the Incineroar, looks like. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Uh, don't really mind if it's, uh, Protect from Kyogre. I think I should u turn the Incineroar just because I got a guaranteed U-turn off. And this position is not, like, the most ideal for me. But, yeah, my opponent doesn't Protect, which is nice. We do get a U-turn off into my opponent. Nice. We could bring out the Ferrothorn, I think, and I definitely want to bring out Ferrothorn. Uh, the reason I want to bring out Ferrothorn is the uh, threat of Power Whip into the Kyogre the following turn. And Dragon Pulse the Ensign. Since it's not Barry, it doesn't have recovery. Well, my opponent could have changed it once again. We don't know. Origin Pulse is going to come out, which is going to do a decent amount to my team, but not really anything too, too significant. Nice. Uh, the question is, do you fake out? Because if you have Flare Blitz, you could go out into the Rayquaza here and fake out my Ferrothorn, which I can definitely see. Um, I think the play is actually just to Dragon Pulse the Kyogre and go into my Kyogre right here. Because I could pressure the Ray the following turn if it decides to come in. If you Flare Blitz here and try to make that switch, I think that really works out for me. So... We'll see here what my opponent decides to do. Also, it doesn't really make sense for you to leave Kyogre vulnerable to a power up. If you fake out an Origin Pulse, I guess. But I don't really see what's that really getting you other than maybe damage. But, like, I don't know. Then you're in a really weird spot the following turn, in my opinion. So, that's the reason why I want to keep Farifarn as healthy as possible to handle the Celesteela as well. So, we'll see what my opponent decides to do. Uh, we haven't confirmed a switch yet on my opponent's side. We will bring out a Kyogre. And let's see. Is there a ray switch? Is there a fake out? Could be a fake out in the Dialga, but I can't. I'm not exactly too sure about that play. Power Whip is just like if I if you fake out the Dialga and I power up the Kyogre, it just makes no sense. Fake out into the looks like it was the fair front slot, so okay. A critical hit, a little bit annoying, but not the biggest deal in the world. We do get a dragon pulse off. Which will do a lot to the Kyogre. Nice. Origin pulse is gonna come out once again. And I do think we're in a fine spot. Oh, that's a crit. Oh, wait, that's not a crit. That just did a lot. Okay. Um, If anything, I could see a switch here from my opponent. You're worried about Dragon Pulse into Origin Pulse into the Kyogre slot, I think. Ray could come in, I think, for the Incineroar slot. So I kind of want to call that. Yeah, I'm just going to Origin Pulse Dragon Pulse. Because I get a KO on the Incin slot, I think. Or I just get a bunch of damage on a Ray, which is like really beneficial here. So, we'll see what my opponent decides to do here. But you should be scared of a double target and a Kyogre as well. Like, there's a lot of things here uh, that is potential. And if I get rid of Incineroar, that's also really good for me. We're going to see the Protect from the Kyogre. Hoping that's a U-turn, but it could just be a Darkest Lariat. Uh, Snarl, actually. Okay. So, the team was changed. Snarl is going to come out. Which is still beneficial because I think I get the Dragon Pulse and the Origin Pulse off. Which should allow me to knock out the Incin. As long as we connect. So, Dragon Pulse is going to come out into the Ensign, Origin Pulse. Please connect. Nice. Okay. Good. That's really good. We get rid of the Incineroar right there. So, Incineroar does go down. Oh, do I want a Thunder the following turn is the question. A Ray probably comes in. If it's Celesteela, I just Thunder the Kyogre slot, so it's not a big deal. Oh, Celesteela is coming out. Okay. Cool. Heavy Slime won't knock out either one of my Pokemon, so I'm just going to go for Dragon Pulse and Thunder. And then I should be able to win with Incin plus my uh, Farifarn in the back. Yeah. We'll go for Dragon Pulse and Thunder. Because we should be able to get a guaranteed knockout on the Kyogre. Or just get some nice damage in Array, which is also really beneficial here for our team. And again, Celesteela can lead seed, can wide guard, can't really do much otherwise. We might see a wide guard here. But, yeah, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if we saw a wide guard. Um, literally, I think my opponent's best play is to switch an Array. But I want to cover the Kyogre saying Because if I get rid of Kyogre, my instance kind of freed up. 
So we'll see what my opponent has to do here. Oh, just wide guard. Perfect. That's actually the best case scenario for me because now I get a Dragon Pulse and a Thunder off into the uh, Kyogre. And that should allow me to pick up a Knockout into the Kyogre. Nice. So Kyogre goes down and then Ray comes in. Has to choose a target. I get an Ice Beam or I trick him off. Hmm. The problem is Ray is healthy. Like that's the one thing I don't like. Ray is healthy. Ray is gonna come out. Maybe the best place just to go in Cineroar and Trick Room here. Yeah, the best place to go in Cineroar and Trick Room here, I think. I wanna reset the special attack drop. With Delta Stream, it's not really gonna do too much. I think Earth Power is gonna come into the Dialga slot. And a Leech Seed, I want to say. Like, that's what I would assume my opponent does. Because I don't think you want to let Trick Room go back up. And I think this works for me. Because I get Incineroar and I get Intimidate off. I could um, fake out Ice Moon the following turn. Even if I lose Dialga. If you target down the Incineroar slot with Dragon Sense, it's not KOing anyway. And I could fake out Dragon Pulse, which is fine too. Keeps going for Wide Guard. Which is an interesting play. I, I don't see what you're Wide Guarding though. Are probably gonna come out into Dialga. Which is to be expected, but again, I didn't need Dialga. Like, Dialga was pretty much did its job at that point. Got the Trick Room up, got the chip damage I needed on my opponent's members for me to knock it up. Now I can go Kyogre, click Ice Beam, Fake Out. Uh, with Delta Stream gone, this is gonna be close whether it knocks out, but I think Fairphorn should be in a prime position to win afterwards. So, get the Kyogre out, get an Ice Beam off in Array. Maybe my opponent thinks I'm Origin Pulse Water Spout. Maybe that's why you went for the Wide Guard. I don't know, the Wide Guard was just super, super confusing at that point. Uh, we will go for Fake Out Ice Beam. Let's see. Chip. I don't think Ice Beam KO. This is Assault Vest. Yeah, barely. But, like... Again, that's exactly the damage I need, so that's completely fine. At least he's actually going to go out into the Kyogre, which is fine. Um, yeah, I just sack Kyogre here. Like, I don't need Kyogre at all. I think I just go for the double up into the Rayquaza. I'm going to go for Thunders because I can't miss, and I'm going to U-turn out the Ray slot, and that should be the game. Like, my opponent can't be fair for him. Heavy Slam's not doing enough damage, especially with the Intimidates from my, uh, from my Incineroar. We're going to see the Earth Power into the Incineroar slot, which is going to do a good amount of damage. Doesn't proc Barry, but again, we just U-turn out. Even if we lead to it's not a big deal. Heavy Slam doesn't really matter at this point. Thunder will be able to get, do a good amount of damage to Ray. And now, hmm, lead seed once again into the Incineroar, but that's fine. Again, you turning out, so the lead seed isn't even going to matter at this point. And then we can get our Pharaoh back. We can get Pharaoh and we can knock off. And then, yeah, there's really no chance the Celestia is 3v1ing, especially with Thunder Kyogre. So, yeah. Sally gonna do Sally things, but doesn't have Flanter. Beat Seed, Wide Guard, Heavy Slam, Protect. And if you had if you have flamethrower, I don't think it knocks off air front anyway at this range. And I think I would still win regardless. Let's knock off these leftovers, which is annoying. Get instant in. The match is gonna be forfeit forfeited. My opponent realizes he can't be Pharaoh. Uh Kyogre has Thunder too. I have an instant in the back still. Like there was basically no way my opponent was getting out of that. So we are gonna be able to take a win there. And that is gonna be a 2-0 for today's episode. Probably a 3 0. <laughs> If um, that other if that other battle was shown, but it was only a three turn game anyway, uh, to my opponent DC. But hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2019 Back to Battles. If you do enjoy these videos and want to show your support, leave a like down below on the video, uh, leave a comment down below, and share it with your friends. If you want to go that extra mile, you can support me on Patreon. I'm really thankful to uh, my Patreon people for helping me, especially with this new mic. And you could be one of them too. 
But otherwise, you can check out my other stuff down below, my social media, my side series on the channel, my Twitch channel where I do stream. And I'll probably be streaming more often on Twitch, especially over this month of July. So be sure to go check that out, twitch.tv slash jspeed1. Otherwise, there is a team down below. If you do want to go try it out, there's a pacement down below in the description. So if you want, if you want to try out the team, feel free to. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Have a great day, people. Until we battle again, I'll catch y'all later.